Toastmasters, please help me welcome Toastmaster Chakali Khan. Please thank you so much. I hope some of you in this room might have seen the movie Autograph. In a review of that movie, I read these lines. The movie is not technically strong. The story is too mainstream and the screenplay is also very slow. The movie runs for three and a half hours. But one thing is sure, everyone after seeing this movie will just look back their childhood days. It, I mean, those moments can bring a smile on them or tears in their eyes. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. It is usual that in every house, the children will be asked to buy groceries and in turn there will be tip for that. It is the same in this house also. But one thing is different. The tip amount is way lower than the market value. The boy was tired of ask, I mean, uh, asking a rise in his tip amount. But uh, the management didn't give any. So instead of asking, he just started looking out, uh, is there any loophole in the process of supply and logistic process? And he found one. And he started making money out of it. He was very happy because he could make some money out of it without, without his parents, uh, I mean, revision or something. So um, it went well for some time. And uh, he used that money to share with his friends and all. He spent his money with his, with his friends. So everything went normal. Uh, at one time, when he was buying uh, things or snacks items for his friends, he gave caught to his sister. So she would have ignored the scene if it was around one or two packets of lace. But at that time, he was holding 10 packets of lace here and 10 packets of Cheetos here and two bottles of Pepsi here. And one thing led to the another. So he was in the center of the room and everyone in the family were surrounding him. Surrounded, I mean, uh, awesome. So he was explaining the scam to everyone. Mom, you are too accurate with the prices of every groceries than the, shop, than the shopkeeper. So I can't cheat you in that. But one thing, you don't have any measurements, right, to weigh them. So instead of, uh, I took advantage of that. Instead of buying 1 kg of sugar, I bought 0.8 kg of sugar. Instead of buying 2 kg of meat, I bought 1.8 kg of meat. So in this manner, I made money. The screen freezes. Yeah, this is based on true life incident. And the boy was me. It happened when I was studying fourth standard. So after six years, after completing my 10th standard, my parents put me up in the residential school at SRV Rasipuram. So I moved from Madurai to Rasipuram uh, to do my plus one and plus two. So everything around me was new. So I was very much excited to live my own life. On the very first day, the teacher asked this question. Is there anyone who is a topper in your old school? Yeah, I'm a topper. I just raised my hands. I got 993 out of 1,100. So I just raised my hands. And I saw no one in my bench is raising their hands. So simple. I'm the topper of my bench also. I asked the guy who was sitting right next to me. Hey, you. What's your mark? 1,069. 1,069? You want to top up? Yeah. 1,098 is the first mark in my school. I think it was. Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I clearly understood the intention behind the teacher's question. The next two years were awesome, wonderful, and unforgettable, apart from academics. So after completing my 12th standard, so it is the time to make an important decision in my life. So two roads in front of me, neither of them is less traveled by. Instead, both of them are more crowded. One is MBBS, and another one is engineering. So my mom wants, to, wants me to go in this direction. So because she loves it a lot, but I want to go in this one. So some of the conversation between me and my mom in those periods, right? Son, we already have two engineers in our house. So it's boring now. Do a business. No, I can't. You can serve the country and you can serve the poor who is in need. No, ma, I can't. Okay, you can make a lot of money. No, I can't. You will get a good wife, man. What? What? <laughs> yes, your yeah, you get a good wife. Yes, you are correct sometimes, but no. Uh, I need a peaceful life rather than a beautiful wife. Wow. <laughs> I just choose this one instead of this one. It is more colorful than the one. I mean, than the one which is full of white color dresses. And I uh, completed my BE in Computer Science at Tiara Raja College of Engineering in Madurai. And then I joined a company, software company in Chennai. And currently I'm working, working in that, Athena Health. And um, apart from this, about, I mean, uh, about my family, my father is working in uh, Indian Versus Bank. And one of my sister is working in Infosys. And the other 
uh, she, uh, she, she completed her PhD recently. So now my mom can say, uh, two of her child is engineers and one of, one of them is doctor. So it's simple. And uh, I started my uh, CC1 journey uh, somewhere three, four, five minutes. And now I think I can add this event to my list of memories. Over to you. I strongly suspect whether you are giving your CC speech or you are repeating your CC1 speech after completing CC that. <laughs> what a speech, man. What a way of opening your Toastmasters journey. I could see body language, vocal variety, humor, whatnot. I think so your evaluator will give you a more detailed report. Now let's move on to the second speaker. The second speaker is an engineering graduate from PSG College of Engineering. And today he is running his own industry. And today he is going to do project number three, get to the point from the competent communicator manual. And the title of the speech will be leaving a legacy behind. Today he has uh, two speech evaluators. One is sitting in the last row. Now let me call upon the official evaluator, Toastmaster Kalil Raghuman. Hi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, my target speaker, Toastmaster, uh, Prabhagar is uh, top. I am presenting his uh, CC3 from Competent Computing uh, Get to the point. The speech objectives are to select a topic and determine its general and specific purposes, organize the speech in a manner that best achieves the general uh, and specific purpose needs, ensure it has a strong beginning, body, and conclusion for reinforcing the purposes specified, project sincerity and conviction, and also try not to use the logic. I want to note the time along with this five to seven minutes. Thank you, Kalu Ruma. So when he said that uh, he's having two evaluators, I think you could not get the point. Uh, today has come with this better off. And uh, she will also be making a uh, feedback uh, <laughs> all, uh, at the end of the meeting. Please welcome Postmaster Prabha here. Thank you. When you sit on a giant shoulder, you can see beyond. This means that someone in the family has made some achievements. The next generation, you know, these years are out. They go and go beyond. Good afternoon, Toastmasters. I welcome this. Good afternoon. JRT Tata was the chairman of Tata Group of Companies. He started many companies during his tenure, and the most important among them were TCS. From where you are coming, Delco, which is now known as Stato Motors, and Air India. In fact, he was the first pilot in our country. When he took over, the net worth of the company was $100 billion. But when he handed over the, to the next chairman, it was $5 billion. US dollars. The next generation, Ratan Tata took over, and he added and went on to make $100 billion. So that is the type of legacy which was leaving behind for the next people to take over. Now, leaving a legacy behind is not necessarily confined to properties or companies which one can do in life. It could also mean values in life. O'Hare was a successful lawyer practicing in Chicago in the 1920s. There was prohibition in the US, and there was one man who was applying illicit alcohol, and he started gaming houses casinos and brothels. And this man was a ruthless gangster. Anybody who was challenging him used to shoot them. And whenever he had very strong cases against him, Eddie O'Hare was the lawyer who used to brilliantly argue his cases in the court of law. And the judge would dismiss his case as insufficient evidence. That man created gangster was Al Capone. Now O'Hare was a lawyer who was helping Al Capone in all these ways. And he had a soft spot for his, he had a family with two daughters and one son. He had a very strong liking for his son. He wanted his son to have good education, had cars, and he also told him what is good and bad. He wanted his son to be a better man than him. But he wanted to get out of this gangster's way. It's not so easy. So one way traffic. You can go inside a gangster's way, you cannot get out of it. He knew he was running a risk, but he wanted to leave a legacy for his son. What type of life he was leaving? So one day he said, enough is enough. And despite his uh, risk to his wife, 
challenge to do not take. He cooperated with IRS. IRS is the Internal Revenue, Internal Revenue Service in US, which is uh, equal to our income tax department. He is pointed out to the accountant who was maintaining the accounts in a very coded form. The federal authorities had enough uh, evidence to prosecute Al Capone, not for the murders which he committed, but for evading income tax. He was serving at 11 years in prison. And true to O'Hare's fears, he was shot dead before Al Capone was released from the prison. Now the junior O'Hare was brought up by his father, who got had high values in life. He joined the Navy. He became a pilot. And during the World War II, he was leading the third squadron and shot on many Japanese aircrafts. Then in the, when the fuel went low, he also was shot. But his, his performance was exemplary during the World War II. Recognizing his contribution to the Navy, the US government named the Chicago International Airport as Chicago O'Hare International Airport. So people who have reached the pinnacles of life have not done in one giant step. They made little, little things and went to the top. Our own president says, your life may be an instant, but your life should be history. So how we can do little things, small, small things in life and go to the top? Anyone who gets up after 6 o'clock in the morning, please raise your hands. Frank, Frank said that early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. Benjamin Franklin. So, little things which we do is all the big steps which will add up to our own. Thing. Coming to my own story, my father comes from a very humble background. He had no formal education and he learned English under a private tuition. He learned typewriter and was communicating the business world. And even at the age of eight years, he was learning computers from my son, that is his grandson. So I have been inspired by, by, by my father, and I am now learning the art of public speaking by joining the Toastmaster Club. So these are the types of legacies which we can leave behind. Our own medleys are footsteps of success. It is a matter of time before all of you also reach more to the top. When my father visited me in Chennai, I was making calculations of trying to find out how I could live within my own expenses. That time I was working in a company. And my father looked at me and said, son, don't bother about your expenses. Spend as much as you want. Then he quickly said, earn more than you spend. I am continuing the BBC is left behind. The Middle who are all here on the footsteps of success and so you will also reach the top. It's a matter of time. And when you go to the top, you will should not lose maintain your perspective. And once <laughs> when you reach the top, you will leave a legacy behind for your next generation of kids and kids to follow. And when that happens, they will go beyond what we have achieved in our life. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Suprabhakar, for that inspiration speech, which had a three layer approach, probably in the reverse order. <laughs> now, let's have the third speaker, Lokesh Chandra, Ghostbusters Lokesh Chandra. He's attending project number four from the Competent Communication Manager.